Hello there, Maverick Traders. This is Imri and welcome to today's market recap. It is Wednesday, August 16th. So like Ankit, I'm primarily on the currency side of the firm, but uh, we'll be dipping our toes into the into the uh, options and equity side of the firm a little bit more often. So you'll be seeing our updates a little bit more regularly. Now, just a little bit of background on me. I primarily view the market through the lens of the Elliott Wave principle. So Elliott Wave, the, the Elliott Wave model is something I put a tremendous amount of time and research into. It is the cornerstone for my trading philosophy and my investment strategies as well. So if Elliott Wave is something you've always been curious about or you have questions uh, about, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email address is imri at maverick That's I, M as in Michael, R-E at mavericktrading.com. All right, and without further ado, let's get right into it. So we'll be covering uh, the meaningful news of the day. We'll be going over broader market analysis, including a little bit of commodities. And then we'll be taking a look at the major indices, market internals. Of course, we're gonna be looking at the heat map. It is looking pretty red today. And then we'll glance through some setups and opportunities. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. Okay, so breaking down what happened today, it was a pretty red day. Uh, you know, all the major indices down quite a bit. We can see that IWM and, and QQQ leading the way down and on the commodity side of things, the oil was down and gold was down a little bit as well. So all, all this is to say is that the dollar is outperforming, you know, and, and giving a, a currency traders perspective for a moment. I think that dollar strength is in the late stages of the game right now. I mean, we've had a, a pretty significant rally over the last four or five weeks or so, and we're approaching a potential top in the dollar, which might coincide with the bottom in risk assets as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but as of right now, the story is, is risk off for sure. Uh, in terms of daily news, we can see that the Fed minutes sh uh, showed that further rate hikes may be needed uh, dot 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 unless conditions change so not you know not too not too different from what we've seen in the past the fed remains data dependent and we're getting mixed signals overall on the battle against inflation um, if you want my two cents yes it's highly likely we are going to see further rate hikes so the question is you know what is the market pricing in right now and, and when uh, when are buyers going to start stepping in? So obviously the answer to that question is going to be largely psychological, which is why we look primarily at technical analysis to provide us with those answers. Uh, okay, so kicking things off with some Elliott Wave analysis on the S&P 500, I wanted to present this scenario because it is ultimately a, a quite a bearish scenario that suggests we have a very significant leg to go still in, uh, in, in the bear market that started in, uh, pretty much started picking up steam in, in early 2022, started in late 2021. So a quick refresher on the Elliott Wave model. Whenever you can count a five wave movement, whether it's up or down, that signifies the direction of the greater underlying trend. So you can see I've got these labels showing one, two, three, four, five on the way down uh, with, with that bottom in late, late October 2022. All right, so, so that right there tells me that the greater trend is still likely to the downside. And the rally, as impressive as it may have been, is ultimately going to be counter trend. Now, what's interesting about this scenario is that I can count the entire rally as being complete. Uh, so what that means is that when I'm looking at the internals of this rally, going down into intraday data and sometimes to tick level data, uh, I, I've noticed that, that this rally counts very mature and if, if this count is correct, then we are going to see significant downside over the days and weeks to come. Um, that doesn't mean there won't be bounces, of course. Now, is there a bullish scenario? Yes, there is, of course, a bullish scenario. Um, it's something that I'll discuss if you know price conditions change enough to, to warrant that that 
uh, analysis. I don't want to throw too many different scenarios out there. I'm going to stick with the one that the odds favor the most. And then if the odds shift, we can make those adjustments accordingly. But suffice to say, you know, right now, technically, there's a key level I have my eye on, and that's at 4404, which is in my view, a bearish key level. If we break that, I would say at minimum, we're looking for a test of the 50 period moving average coming in at 42.92. So next up, we've got the Qs. Uh, I, I, I mean, this is ugly as well. We're below both moving averages, another couple down days, and we might see a bearish moving average cross as well. Uh, we're trading within this, within this bearish price channel. It remains to be seen whether we're gonna break out the bottom or not. Now you'll notice that the bottom of that channel currently comes uh, very close to coinciding with this key level of 357.59. If we break below the bottom of that channel and have a strong daily close below that key level, then that would activate probably a, a rush of panic selling in the markets. Uh, now it's no surprise, look, growth, particularly tech, <laughs> anything, anything that even smacks of AI did very well in this rally. And, and if we do get a larger corrective sequence here, let alone um, the scenario that I was calling for earlier, which is another swipe of the bear at this market, you know, then it's it, what led the market up is gonna lead the market on the way down. Uh, it doesn't feel all that long ago um, that we've been talking about looking for value in the market and how quickly narratives change. Quickly, uh, narratives quickly change on the way up and they change just as quickly on the way down. Okay, looking at the heat map, uh, like I said, a lot of red. The there are there bright spots? Yeah, utilities did reasonably well. You know that's that's pretty impressive, all things considering. Uh, consumer defensive, you know, did all right as well. Walmart's got earnings tomorrow, I believe. Um, Target, oh, oh geez, like like Target embroiled in cultural controversy. Um, announced earnings, mixed results, up on the day. Uh, I mean, that's that's this market for you. And we can we can also see um, you know we can also see insurance brokers did reasonably well too. But the big stuff, you know, tech, communications, consumer cyclical, um, even energy, which has been a good trade for for the last little while. All of that stuff is is in the red today. So. Uh, we're, we're gonna, we might look a little bit at, at, in fact, if you have any questions about sector rotation, let me know. That's something that I spent a lot of time on uh, because I'm analyzing these sectors again through the lens of the Elliott Wave model. So I, I'm not just looking at what's happening in sectors right now, but I'm also trying to forecast where that rotation of money is going to go in the future. Uh, all right, so moving on to the market outlook, it, look, it's subjectively, it's, it's really tough to, to, to call this, uh, I mean, on the, as far as my the week goes, I, I'd say we're hovering zero, leaning slightly negative. I, I, I think the next couple of days of trading are going to be very informative. If we take out that bearish key level, then I think at minimum we have a test of that 50 period moving average, as I mentioned earlier. And it's it's pretty similar for the monthly outlook as, as well. Um, also seasonally, we're heading into September, which is sometimes notoriously difficult for the stock market too. So lots of factors um, you know, that, that I see as being potential headwinds here. Okay, uh, all right, so we've got some potential trades here on the, look, on the bullish side, there, there aren't a lot. Uh, ABBB, Domino's, Eli Lilly, MHO, Home Builder. Um, th these are all charts that are looking very, very interesting to me. In most cases, they've had nice moves up. Um, and, and then we're looking at consolidations here. Uh, ABBV, obviously embroiled in, in controversy as well, similar to Target. And uh, ironically, I, I think that controversy helped to spur on a bottom. And I, I'm personally looking at, at buying pullbacks in that stock. Neutral trades hasn't changed too much from, from previous recent updates. And then on the bearish trades, I, I'm targeting uh, miners and, and uh, and service providers, you know, so GDX, obviously the, the that gold, the gold uh, miners ETF, I see a little bit more downside. We're going to take a closer look at, at, at that ETF. WPM, um, weed and precious metals also looking pretty rough in the short and intermediate terms. And then FCX as well, uh, it's Freeport McMoran. So we're going to take a look at those charts. Um, all right, so here, here's a bullish trade in, uh, in Corporacion America airports. This is a really interesting stock. Again, from an Elliott wave perspective, you can see I've got my labels here and I think we're headed for a fifth wave. 
The way I like to play these fifth waves is I'm waiting for prices to break out past 1433. That is my go level. You know, that's my green light. Uh, on the downside, we have no business really trading much below 1331. If we dip anywhere lower than 1331, that would invalidate the triangle pattern, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have further upside. It just means I'm gonna have to look for a different uh, chart pattern to get me into the trade. But assuming we hold above 1331, then the key level I'm looking for to confirm the breakout to, uh, to higher prices will be 1433. You could also call this a high base, perfectly fine with that. Uh, I, either way, this is those kinds of setups where I believe the risk reward factor is very promising. So excited about that. My minimum upside target would be right around $16. Okay, here's GDX. So like I said, it's, it's looking pretty rough. Um, I, I do think GDX is going to have a very big, uh, a, a very big rally in, in the, let's say in the intermediate to, intermediate to long term, but in the short term, it looks pretty wretched. I think we have further downside to go. I'm looking for structural support around $27, which just happens to be the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement of the rally from late September uh, 2022, all the way up to you know spring of 2023. So we've done, we've done quite a bit of work here to, to give back a lot of those gains. And I, I think we're nearing sufficiently oversold conditions that warrant looking for a bottom. But until then, I think there's plenty of downside still to, to play for. Uh, you know, I think, I think 27 would be preliminary support, but we could break out the bottom of this yellow support zone and, and reach 26, 25, perhaps even $24. So I think, I, think the, I think that GDX has a little bit more downside to go before we can start looking for that bottom. Uh, so this is uh, actually a chart that I, I'd look to play both ways, potentially. The bullish scenario in GDX as of right now leans on the near-term key level of 29.61. If we break through there, that's when I would switch my bias uh, from, from looking for, uh, for reasons to, you know, to, to, to be short the stock to, to reasons to be long. Okay, WPM, Wheat and Precious Metals, very similar to GDX in terms of the chart. Uh, as you would expect. So here we're also completing an Elliott Wave corrective cycle. Most Elliott Wave corrections are labeled ABC, but there is a subset of corrective sequences within the Elliott Wave framework, which actually use the labels WXY. So an ABC would be an example of a simple corrective sequence. A WXY is a complex corrective sequence. So whenever we're dealing with a WXY, it just means that we have uh, multiple ABCs within the corrective sequence. So wave W is an ABC, wave X is its own ABC, and then wave Y is its own ABC. So you can see from my labels here, I think we're, we still have a little bit lower to go to finish wave A of Y. We're gonna get a three wave rally for wave B, and then we're going to uh, be, have a really good opportunity in all likelihood to, to go short against that rally and look for a bear setup all the way down to about $38, which is the 61.8% retracement level. All right, so for tomorrow's outlook, like I said, nearing a very important bearish key level in the S&P 500. As far as economic reports go, we've got unemployment claims tomorrow, as well as the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index. And on the earnings front, we've got Walmart, AMAT, and Ross. So uh, yeah, lots of cool things to be looking out for. This is definitely a trader's market. Um, what I mean by that is, is, geez, when everything's going up, it's tough to be a trader because you should just buy the meme stock or the high growth stock, hang on to it and do nothing else. Uh, it's, I don't want to say it's easy to make money in that environment, but, but that's the kind of environment where people that aren't professional traders tend to thrive. Those environments don't stick around very often. And uh, those same people that thrive during that period of relative outperformance tend to suffer as the market turns. You know, so this is our time to shine. This is our time to employ some of these strategies that, that you know, we've studied and learned and put into practice. So uh, I'm very, you know, very encouraged by, from a trading standpoint, by what I'm seeing in the markets. Uh, there should be plenty of opportunity in the days and weeks ahead. All right, traders, that's it for me. Look forward to speaking with you in a couple of weeks. Take care. Bye for now.